I hate the sun. And I love the sun. <laughs> it's so hot. We are the exact opposite. I try to avoid the sun as much as I can. And I, I try to embrace the sun as much as I can. How about you? I'm guessing that your relationship with the sun is somewhere in between, like for myself. I try to go into the sun without sunscreen, but I'm definitely not as crazy as those guys. Don't get arrested! <laughs> There are currently two sides debating about the impact of the sun for the human body. The sun is just foundational, like one of the most important things, period. Well, I'm in the sun hours every day. And then there's the other side which claims exactly the opposite. And just because it's natural doesn't mean it's 100% safe. Just generally, I don't get a lot of sun exposure. How can we compare those two approaches? This is a new topic for me and therefore I needed to reach out to someone who studied the sun because sun and that's a shadow. Yeah, someone who studied the sun way more in detail than I did. And that's actually how I met Steven. Well, I'm Steven Lupka. One of my favorite topics is, uh, is the sun. Where is it? Here? Stephen has been studying the sun and living a circadian lifestyle for almost seven years now. This means that all of his activities are governed by the sun, like waking up, going to sleep, and also how he works. So as you can imagine, he's on this side of the spectrum. But it wasn't always like this. I did not think the sun was important growing up. Like you're told, if anything, to avoid it. And that's also what Dr. Dre thinks. She's a dermatologist with a big YouTube channel. And her advice is exactly the opposite. And we do recommend that people wear sunscreen every single day, year round, including when they are indoors. How can those approaches be so different? And what are the health implications of following those? I had this crazy question. Who would die first? <laughs> So to answer this question, we need to look into four different aspects of the sun. Vitamin D, UV light, cancer and the circadian rhythm. So let's start with looking into vitamin D. What happens to your body when you go into the sun? Yeah, it looks like nothing is happening. The sun rays will touch your skin and this starts a chemical reaction within your body to produce vitamin D. This vitamin D is then absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to various organs and tissues in the body. Everybody agrees that vitamin D is crucial for our body. Vitamin D is important. Vitamin D is essential for our bone health. But if both of those extreme examples want to maximize their vitamin D intake, they would do it in a different way. My strategy isn't really that complicated. I simply go into the sun and that's it. <laughs> I don't really need to go in the sun. I have those. When you get vitamin D from the sun, what happens is your body sulfates cholesterol. So it actually lowers your bad cholesterol. And when you're taking it in a pill form, that doesn't happen. So they're not the same. So I'm gonna show you how I take them. About 20 ounces of water. So typically I'll just um, do it in about three different goes. First one down. Are there zero benefits to supplemental oral vitamin D? I'm not saying that. Some of these benefits that are being attributed to vitamin D really are not from vitamin D and are from sun exposure via other pathways. So you're telling me that simply swallowing this pill is not the same as being in the sun? My question is, why take the health risk of exposing your skin to the sun when we know there's no safe level of UV exposure that won't damage your skin and set the stage for skin cancers? And that's my issue with the sun. I don't want to increase any chances for those skin cancers. Healthy and tan do not go together. <laughs> By definition, when your skin is tanned, it's damaged. I guess you probably heard about this already, but the bad thing about the sun is the UV light. I think it is clear that UV is a stressor on the skin. UV light is a known carcinogen, so there really is zero safe dose of UV light. Ultraviolet radiation is broken down into different categories. There is UVB that directly damages the DNA in our skin, leads to skin cancers. UVA, on the other hand, is another component of ultraviolet light that comes from the sun that penetrates much more deeply into our skin. You see, 
So the sun is dangerous. It's a fact. You can do nothing about that. Yes, you're right. It's a fact. But it's important to understand how science derived at that fact. There's kind of two sorts of research. One is like a population study. But then all of the other stuff is cell studies for the most part. And what they'll do is they'll basically get like a UV light bulb and just shine directed UV onto a cell or onto like a mouse that has had the hair shaved off of it. Now, both of those scenarios are abnormal. Mice do not wander around with no hair and cells do not get direct UV exposure, but we'll put that aside. Sunlight, it has a spectral composition. It's not just UV. And this was crucial for me to understand because UV doesn't equal the whole sun. So along with the UV, you have infrared, you have red light, you have the visible light spectrum. And what's very popular now among athletes and kind of health people, red light therapy. You might have heard of this. So when you're in the sun, there's this other form of radiation, which we now use to repair the skin that you're getting along with the UV. But in the lab where we're studying UV, it's just UV. And that's one point which we need to understand that those studies are basically abnormal studies because they have nothing to do with the real life. Now he's trying to tell me that all UV research which we have is basically worthless. Yes, bro. You maybe can draw a little bit of a conclusion here that UV in isolation in this one environment might have this impact, but that doesn't then translate to the sun. As you can see, it's rather neutral. That's why the sun lover gets half a heart back. For me, it just sounds like you want to tell me that the sun isn't causing any cancer at all. And I think that's simply wrong. When you talk to the average person, what they're gonna say is like, okay, like the plus side is vitamin D, and the downside is skin cancer. So we need to talk about cancer. But before we do so, this would normally be the part where you see an annoying YouTube ad. But today, it's this guy. I wanted to mention if you want to learn more about this topic, you can now go backstage. What does this mean? Obviously with my videos, you just see a part of the interviews which I conduct with the people I talk to. And there is way more to learn about the topics which I cover. Now you can see the full interviews backstage on my highlighter.com profile. Additionally, you will get access to a group of like-minded people. We're now about 300 people talking about health and lifestyle related topics. Topics. So if you have any questions about the sun, sleeping on the floor or other videos which I covered, you can talk to people who actually tried it themselves. Other than that, we now need to talk about cancer. Generally what we find is there are three types of skin cancer. There is basal cell, there is squamous cell and there is melanoma. Basal cell and squamous cell are generally minor. They're the sort of things you go to the dermatologist, they say, oh, hey, that's, that's skin cancer, and they freeze it and it falls off and you're fine. Melanoma is bad. Melanoma can be like systemic and is bad. And that's why I don't want to go out in the sun because I don't want to increase my chances of getting those cancers. I mean, look at you, man. You're gonna die pretty soon if you keep doing this. It doesn't feel that bad. Is it bad? It's pretty clear that sun does increase the rate of basal cell. Squamous cell, maybe, maybe not. It's more inconclusive. But these are both, let's be clear, these are relatively minor. When you're over age 50, you just see the dermatologist once a year. They will catch this. It's just removed pretty painlessly for most people, right? There can obviously be rare complications. But how is it with melanoma? Because if we look into the data of this cancer, it gets actually very, very interesting. There's a lot of studies and good quality studies that show that high sun exposure actually lowers melanoma rates. And then this is very clear. The higher sun exposure groups are more likely to survive skin cancer. The less sun you get, the more likely you are to die from skin cancer. And that's why the sun haters also need to lose one heart. Steven, just to see if I understood it correctly. So we need to check which skin cancer we're talking about. And then depending on which one, those are being influenced differently by the sun. 
The minor skin cancers, you're more likely to get. The major skin cancer, you're less likely to get. The more sun you get, the more likely you are to survive. The less sun you get, the more likely you are to die. Things have costs and things have benefits. So even if we take it at face value, okay, maybe there's the skin cancer story. What else is there? What else does the sun do? Am I not getting the benefits of sun exposure just because I have sunscreen on? Yeah. Just because I'm sitting in the shade? Yeah. It's just because I have long sleeves on? Yeah. All of these sun avoiding measures impact one crucial aspect. Getting sun into your eyes at the right time of the day. The way the human body works is we react to the sun. The sun is what tells us we're awake. And then at night when it's dark, that's what tells us to go to sleep. And that's called the circadian rhythm. This rhythm affects multiple body functions. Avoiding the sun by staying inside, looking at your phone before sleeping, or even just wearing sunglasses during the day disrupts this circadian rhythm. And I'm looking at a guy in the sun wearing sunglasses and I say, well, you know, the reason you can't sleep is because you're wearing sunglasses now. It's like, what are you talking about? Your circadian rhythm governs everything in your body. And so two things that I think are really important that it governs, a huge amount of your neurotransmitter balance. Your very kind of mental state cannot be separated from these processes. It is like a core part of it. And then also your circadian rhythm is governing your hormones, right? So think about half of everything that goes on in your body, roughly speaking, is influenced by a light dark cycle. And so if you mess that up, half of your processes are impacted on some level. If you don't live according to the circadian rhythm, it won't instantly kill you, but it will have a negative impact on your health. But when you embrace the sun, this helps your sleep cycle, your hormone production, and your overall energy levels, which all lead to a better overall health. And I think what happens for many people is they've been living inside for decades and they'll go spend like two hours outside and they'll be like, oh, I don't feel better. I actually feel kind of hot and sweaty and weird. I guess this is bullshit. Are those people wearing sunglasses the whole time? Forehead Oakleys, round the neck Oakleys, brim of the cap Oakleys, back of the head Oakleys, tucked into my shirt collar Oakleys, Everglades fan boat Oakleys, and Ray-Bans for my eyes. Are they laying on the beach, their body thinks it's nighttime, and they're just getting absolutely blasted. If your body doesn't know that it's daytime, then your skin is not prepared to defend against the downsides of UV radiation. It, it's a holistic picture, right? And this means if you would want to start this lifestyle now, you would be probably pretty confused in the beginning. You would get sunburns and your body would need to adjust and get used to this. And this leads me back to my initial question. Is it healthier to embrace the sun or to avoid it? And everything started with this thought that I had. Who would die first? Well, none of the approaches will immediately kill you. But there is a big difference in how embracing the sun will impact your health. Maybe it does increase skin cancer rates, but it also decreases in the highest UV groups, pancreatic cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, all of these much more complicated, much harder to get rid of systemic risky cancers. Rates fall off a cliff down 50% for the highest UV groups. So it's a complicated picture and it's not just one that you can just be like, well, you know, maybe there's some skin cancer stuff going on, so you don't need the sun incredibly juvenile conclusion. Although it's hard to answer the question who would die first, I think my personal takeaway is that living in accordance with the sun and embracing it on a daily basis sounds way healthier to me than shielding yourself constantly off of it. The sun is something natural which we evolutionary adapted to and constantly putting chemicals onto your skin or not going outside because you're afraid of cancer doesn't sound very healthy to me. We can just look at the evolutionary history of humanity. There was no inside for millions of years. Like the sun was a given. And so the idea that these things that have been with us for uh, prehistory, for all civilizations, that these are bad for us, uh, it's an astonishing claim that should come with mountains of evidence. And it doesn't. A few meta-analyses of skin cancer rates 
is not as sufficient to be like, okay, you don't need the sun. And that's one of the problems our society is facing today. Because we disconnected so much from this lifestyle, the sun basically has no significance anymore. You know, this isn't a scientific term, but it's very experientially real. There's just a huge increase in vitality. You just feel more alive. You feel more vital. You just, there's something intangible that happens that is incredible do you have any experience with this please let me know in the comments if you experience any positive effects like steven just mentioned if you're someone trying to embrace the sun but don't know anybody else let me tell you you're not alone we are a big community talking about health related and lifestyle topics so feel free to join us you can find the highlighter link down below and otherwise i'm gonna see you in the next video bye bye